Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Chris Cotton Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. From the management, we have with us Mr. Nagesh Basavan Hali, non-executive vice chairman GCL, Dr. Arup Basu, managing director GCL, Mr. Akhila Balachander, group CFO GCL, Mr. Sanjay Bahal, CEO and ED GEMPL, Mr. Narasimha Jaya Kumar, CEO, Reeves Retail, Mr. Chandrasekhar Tyagarajan, CFO, GEMPL. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remarks are concluded. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal the operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nagesh Basavan Hali, non-executive vice chairman of Kuriefs Cotton Limited. FY 2024 earnings call for Kuriefs Cotton Limited. I trust you are all in. And I'll hand it over to the respective business CEOs and the CFO for a more detailed review and a discussion. At a very high level, over the years, we have committed to innovation growth. And I'm pleased to report that our journey continues. Reeves Cotton delivered a robust performance in the Q2 and the H1 reflecting the resilience and the diverse portfolio of our various business segments. Our strategic journey of being a key player in the full stack last mile mobility ecosystem continues with our businesses, whether they are with engineering, electric mobility, and retail. Our mission and purpose of empowering millions of lives and livelihoods through sustainable mobility solutions continues. So now with that, let me hand it over to Dr. Aru Basu, who will discuss Greaves Engineering. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, my commentary is on the performance of the B2B products portfolio, that is engines and Excel control linkage. Accelerator, brake, clutch, steering wheel, gear shift, and park brake are the six components used to control any vehicle either physically using rods or cables, or electronically using sensors. Excel Control Linkage custom designs, develops, and manufactures this entire product range of controls, and therefore represents a natural fit to our portfolio. We are making good progress on our ongoing program to build a future-ready, fuel-agnostic product portfolio to gradually wean us from a dependence on demand for diesel engines. The engine and genset portfolio are being augmented with greener fuel agnostic variants that can use CNG, biodiesel, and ethanol blended fuels. In addition, our genset portfolio is fully CPCB4 plus compliant. Simultaneously, we are expanding our international business footprint which currently constitutes just over 10% of our revenues. In addition, we are also expanding the industry segments we serve, for example, industrial tools and passenger cars. Simultaneously, to enable this transformation, we are augmenting our prevailing domain depth in mechanical engineering with mechatronics and electronics. The latter will help accelerate the growth of electronic sensor-based controls from Excel control linkage. In Q2 FY24, the engines business plus Excel control linkage delivered revenues of rupees 381 crore. That was 58% higher year on year and 28% higher quarter on quarter. The engines business delivered revenues of 313 crore that was 30% higher year on year and 22% higher quarter on quarter. EBITDA improved to 10.5% in Q2 FY24 from 
3.5% in Q2 FY23. Overall, the diversity of our customer segments, platform technologies, and application areas combined with our brand Greaves that has stood the test of time for over a century and a half allows us to be optimistic about the future. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'll take over from Arup. Thank you, Arup. Uh, I'm Sanjay Behel. I'm going to give you the commentary on Greaves Electric Mobility's performance in quarter two of financial year 2024. Uh, quarter two was the first quarter of electric two-wheeler industry, which represented quarter-on-quarter -quarter decline after many quarters of steady growth. The industry recorded 181,000 registrations of electric scooters in July, uh, between July to September, as compared to 217,000 in April to June, which is quarter one of the current financial year. It is a decline Q&Q of about 17%. This was led This was led partly by the reduction in same to subsidy incentive on electric scooters effected from 1st June of 2023, and partly by an adverse end consumer price impact owing to the AIS phase two regulations which were implemented from 1st of April of 2023. However, amidst this slowdown in electric two wheelers, Ampere continues to be amongst the top five electric scooters in India in terms of retail sales. Furthermore, Ampere has strengthened its retail reach by launch on multiple new e-commerce platforms, business to government engagements, industry first introduction of electric scooter in an electronic goods stores like Troma, and with Pan India financing partners tie uh, like Muthut Finance. In fact, in addition to Muthut Finance, Ampere has many new participating financial institutes with uh, Bajaj FinServe, Hero uh, FinCorp, Jana Small Financial Bank, HDB, and so on and so forth. Also, Ampere has partnered with many leasing firms like Revfin, Alt Mobility, TWU for vehicle leasing to fleet customers. The three-wheeler market witnessed a very high 23% quarter-on-quarter growth in quarter two with both LC and L5 formats growing in strong double digits. Notably, Greece Electric Mobility achieved a significant milestone by recording its highest ever quarterly sale in the three-wheeler business with 75% increase from first quarter and 100% increase Y on Y basis. During quarter two, we also unveiled our new electric cargo vehicle, Greaves Ultra, in three variants, flatbed, pickup, and delivery van. Currently, this vehicle is under trial with many B2B customers and should be commercially available soon. Now, I want to cover uh, the aspects of same to subsidy matter. As of 30th September 2023, the company had an outstanding amount of 361.78 crores towards the subsidy receivables from Ministry of Heavy Industries of Government of India. This is under the same scheme. The amount includes 80.68 crores, rupees 80.68 crores towards the claims pending to be filed with Ministry of Heavy Industries. During the six month period ended 30th September 2023, the company received a notice from MHI dated 25th May 2023 proposing three things. First, recover the amount of subsidy paid to Gemtel, Greaves Electric Mobility, since inception of the scheme, amounting to 124.91 crores along with the interest thereon. Second, cancel the claims pending with the MHI for payment. And third, deregistering Gemtel from the above scheme. The company submitted its response to the aforesaid notice within the prescribed timelines. The management believes that the company has complied with the scheme duly considering and supported by the legal advice obtained. However, keeping in mind the interests of our consumers and without accepting any of the allegations, contentions, or statements in the notice and without prejudice, the company on 27th October 2023 offered to amicably resolve and put a quietus to the matter and has refunded an amount of rupees 139.98 crores towards subsidy reimbursed by MHI to date, which as I mentioned was rupees 124.91 crores and the interest thereon of rupees 15.07 crores. 
The company awaits confirmation from the MHI for taking the necessary steps to resolve the matter. The amount refunded and the subsidy receivable of rupees 337.34 crores, it's the net of provisions, has already been provided for as an exceptional item in the statement during the current quarter and six months which ended on 30th September 2023. Over to you. Can I just hand over to Narsimha? We can take you through the brief retail performance, please. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Narsimha Jaikumar. I'm the CEO of Greaves Retail. Very excited to be here. Greaves Retail, as some of you are aware, is a leading um, multi-fuel spares and services business that spans the entire asset life cycle of an asset, which is basically a three-wheeler, electric three-wheeler, or small commercial vehicle. The core proposition continues to be high vehicle uptime and driving asset productivity. So very pleased to say that Greaves Retail had a solid quarter uh, on quarter two. Revenues were up 9% Y on Y at 146 crores. On a YTD basis, we touched 284.5 crores, up 12%. Profitability continues to be strong with EBITDA margins of 20% plus. Uh, and the business continues to expand both domestically and exports for spare parts and services. Exports of our multi-brand spare parts uh, has expanded to newer markets like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Africa. Uh, and we witnessed very strong, uh, robust growth for our multi-brand three-wheeler uh, spare parts covering various fuel types. We are seeing very healthy growth there. On, on the domestic front, we expanded our mechanic loyalty program uh, for Greece spares for North and Eastern India during the quarter. Our new Greece Uphar app, which is a mechanic uh, loyalty rewards program, has now over 20,000 registered mechanics covering three-wheelers, small commercial vehicles, and electric three-wheelers. Uh, last quarter, uh, we launched our own range of uh, batteries under the brand name of Greece Power Raja for the L3 aftermarket covering small, you know, electric three-wheelers, uh, both in, in, in the northern and the eastern part of the country. Uh, we expanded our services footprint uh, to add 44 more outlets for grief care. Uh, so overall, uh, the business continues to be doing well, and we are remaining, uh, we remain committed to offering very strong uh, vehicle uptime, which is the core proposition of the business. Um, thank you. Thanks, Narsimha, and good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Akila Balachandar, CFO of Greaves Cotton. I'm happy to report our consolidated revenue of 727 crores for Q2 FY24 and rupees 1,295 crores for H1 FY24. On a standalone basis for Q2 FY24, Greaves Cotton has reported a revenue of rupees 459 crores. Excel, our new acquisition, reported a revenue of rupees 68 crore. And Electric Mobility reported a revenue of rupees 207 crore. Greaves Engines and Greaves Retail both have delivered robust growth, both quarter on quarter and on a year on year basis. For H1 FY24, Greaves Cotton reported a revenue of 855 crore, up by 14% compared to last year. And on a consolidated basis, H1 revenue was rupees 1,295 crore. The good news is that the acquisition and integration of Excel into the Greece fold, the revenues from the GCL plus Excel segment for H1 FY24 stacks at rupees 962 crores. This gives us a strong base to diversify our and enrich our core product portfolio. On the margins, GCL standalone EBITDA margins are now firmly in the double digits, 13.9%. And if I were to look at the GCL plus Excel combined, the margins stand at a healthy 16.3%. This puts us on track for historical trend of 13 plus percentage margins of pre-COVID levels. Standalone the operating PBT is at rupees 62 crores. And H1 FY24, the standalone business ROC, is at 38%. The cash conversion ratio of the company is more than 90%, and that augurs very well in terms of working capital management. 
and also shows the strength that we are seeing in our legacy business today. In terms of balance sheet strength, the company has almost zero debt and a consolidated net cash of Rs. 848 crore, which can be further used for expansion as we go forward. One area where we had seen a lot of pressure in the early part of last year was the overall commodity cycle, and that led to increase in the raw material cost for some of our product segments. I'm happy to note the commodity cycle softening is having a positive impact, and as we go forward, and we are expecting raw material prices and raw materials cost as a percentage of revenue to remain stable in the coming quarters. However, we are closely monitoring and evaluating the current geopolitical situation and its impact on a continuous basis. Our uh, mobility, electric mobility, given the regulatory challenges, reported subdued revenues of 207 crores and an EBITDA of negative 37 crores. The car, as shared by uh, Sanjay earlier, the current electric mobility results are without the impact of any subsidy starting April 1st this year. The amount refunded and the subsidy receivable have now been fully provided for as exceptional items in these results. With this, our consolidated EBITDA was rupees 46 crore and the consolidated operating PBT was rupees 40 crore. Overall, we saw strong and robust financial performance and that reflects the strength of the strategy that the company has initiated over the last couple of years. Thank you. I would request Nagesh to add the concluding remarks and then we can open the floor to Q&D. No, no, let's open it up for the Q&A, right? Please sure. can, uh, open it up for the questions. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. An operator will take your name and announce your turn in the question queue. Participants are requested to only use handset while asking a question. In the interest of time and fairness to all the participants, each participant will be allowed one question and a supplementary question if needed. If participants still have more questions, they, they can join the queue afresh. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ashin from Equiris. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a decent set of numbers. So, so my first question is regarding the standalone business. So, in, within the engine side, we have seen a very good growth during the quarter on the engine business. And uh, also, uh, the profitability in the engine business has uh, improved uh, significantly over the last few quarters. So, could you please give, a, give us more color? On to that, and how do we see this business going forward? Uh, yes, the engine business grew at about 22%. I'll ask the Taro Pasu to give a little more commentary on that. So, thank you. Uh, essentially, we've been pursuing this fuel agnostic uh, approach and uh, expansion of the product portfolio to, inc to include multiple applications. So the combination of these two is allowing us to expand our application segments uh, from uh, automobile or mobility solutions to other engineering applications where you have engines. Uh, the second leg is our increasing focus on international business, as I mentioned, and exports. The third is around the control on costs, which is embedded uh, in our system. So there is a continuous focus on... Uh, making sure we utilize our assets as tightly as possible and maintain cost control and uh, the supply chain focus to make sure that our uh, raw material costs, etc., there is a significant focus on that. So two operational focus elements on productivity and costs and the other is uh, expanding the product portfolio to use multiple applications and exports. Thank you. Okay. Uh 
so my next question is on the e mobility side so uh, uh, given the fact that now you know e3 wheeler is increasing as a percentage of uh, our total e mobility volumes so could you give us color on how is the profitability there and within the uh, e3 wheeler side if you could help us also uh, to give us a split on the e rickshaw and e uh, e auto uh, that would be helpful Yeah. Uh, so, in fact, uh, we registered a growth in both L3 and L5 segment. Uh, L3 being the electric rickshaw segment, and L5 the auto segment. There, uh, both of them grew very, very uh, strongly over the last. The total sales, the volume we registered was 4,706 between both the formats there, which is a 127% growth Y on Y, and about 75% growth, which is Q on Q. Uh, of this. uh close to about 3000 uh numbers were electric rickshaw and the balance was l5 and both had registered a pretty strong growth there coming to your profitability question our three wheeler business is very close to operating margin break even now and uh if going forward with some growth on this number we should be uh having a profitable kind of a margin on this business there uh coming to electric two wheelers as i think akhil also mentioned there was some challenges in terms of subsidy but that chapter is behind us we have closed the entire uh, through the provisioning that we have done we have closed the entire amount which has been provided in the balance sheet going forward with subsidy getting restored uh, we will uh, we have been declaring a uh, a bit of positive quarter which is the quarter four of last financial year we were uh, a positive operating uh, business in electric two wheelers so with subsidy getting restored we are very hopeful that we will get back to our operating margins there i can take any other question you have Yeah. Uh, and sir, uh, lastly, on the Excel control linkage side, so uh, uh, this business is growing pretty strongly. Uh, so, uh, can you help us understand? Is there any synergy of this business with our existing business, and how do we uh, see this business going ahead? So, uh, this is Arup Basu. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening comments, the product portfolio that they make. are used for controlling uh the vehicles now they can be construction vehicles or they can be trucks or whatever it is and that's the synergy because we work on the engine side and the engines need to be then controlled through uh lever sensors whatever it is so the control part is an intrinsic aspect of any uh, prime mover whether that is ic engine based or that is electric based so that's a intrinsic and natural adjacency to our product portfolio thanks okay thanks sir i've joined that thank you the next question is from the line of ami pirani from jp morgan please go ahead yes uh, uh, hi sir thanks for the opportunity uh, first of all a uh, clarification on this subsidy issue so you have paid the government you know around 140 crores like you mentioned um the 360 crores which you mentioned is pending for as of the first half of this year are you still trying to claim that or you have uh, you know uh, you have given up that claim also with the government <laughs> So let me clarify with Sanjay Bell here. Uh, yeah. As I had actually mentioned in my commentary, that we have uh, submitted uh, the money without accepting any allegations and actually without prejudice. So we do reserve our legal rights at this point of time. The decision whether we want to go for it or not, I think, will be prospective, and I don't want to, you know, really take on that at this stage. Okay. Okay. And the vehicles that you are selling now, you know. I- Uh, starting 3q uh, are you still continuing to you know uh, build that you will receive the fame subsidy or you right now is selling without any fame subsidy or now so we actually as i again mentioned there in my commentary that we are waiting confirmation from ministry for taking the necessary steps now to get back to portal now so i think as and when that happens then we'll start i think selling it till then i think we are continuing as we have continued in the first half of the year okay so the customers are getting the fame subsidy for now in the in their price not, basically not yet uh, as i told you that this can only happen once we have withdrawal of the show cause notice and portal activation okay which is so right yet to be confirmed the date of that is yet to be confirmed to us the moment it happens then the customers can avail subsidy till then we not uh, passing any subsidy okay okay and um, uh, you know uh, uh, anyway the subsidies have come down and going forward you have you know the uh, the new launches 
So as we look into next year, you know, say assuming a post subsidy world, how should we think about the uh, the profitability with the overall portfolio that you intend to have on the electric two wheeler side? Yeah. So um, overall, uh, first I want to just clarify that look, we are neither uh, getting subsidy, neither we are charging any customer for the subsidy at this stage. Yeah. So it's been at the uh, pricing excluding any subsidy incentive yeah. to the company. Yeah. Uh, going forward, as we get the subsidy, as you know, it now has been brought down from 15,000 rupees a kilowatt hour to 10,000. Now, if you see our largest selling vehicle, Magna CX, it's got a 2.3 kilowatt battery. So if you look at this, two conditions that they have, one is 10,000 kilowatt per hour battery and the 15% of the X factory price, whichever is lower, is going to be subsidy. This uh, then qualifies Magna CX, our largest selling product, to 16,000 rupees subsidy per vehicle, about 16,000 approximately. Yeah. Okay. So that 16,000 uh, is then uh, going to go uh, in partly into margin and partly probably we'll pass it on to the customer uh, to make ourselves even more competitive and get back to some mobilizing our momentum and getting back to the double digit share that we used to enjoy pre the you know the uh, stopping of the portal. So that, I think, is yet to unfold there, but you can understand that at about a volume that we're doing, you can multiply by 16,000 rupees per vehicle, that's just a, and then we have high-speed vehicles where we can enjoy up to 20 to 22,000 rupee incentive per vehicle. So an average of that would be a very good indication of how much of additional margin can accrue. And then we will use that partly to become even more competitive and mobilize our scale, and partly, of course, it will be a margin accredited uh, incentive that we'll get. Understood. So I, I appreciate that, but I was I was more thinking from the point of view of say assuming that the fame is anyways ending. I mean there is talk of fame three. We don't know yet, but assuming that the fame is anyways ending by March 24, given the newer high speed vehicles that you have anyways unveiled and you have you know mentioned in the presentation also, uh, how should we think of profitability? And if you can just add. Um, uh, 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 where do you stand on the PLI? I mean, are, are any of your vehicles, are you trying to, you know, get them certified for PLI and what that benefit could be next year? Yeah, so coming to PM3, you are right. Currently, there is no notification that we have on PM3. And the current uh, timeline stipulated for PM2 to get over is 31st March 2024. Yeah. yeah. So we have about, what, about a four and a half months ahead of us, a little over four and a half months ahead of us, the subsidy there. Yeah. Now the uh, announcement of city and high-speed scooters that you talked about, there are high-speed scooters we have primus and we already have mentioned in our investor deck, there is one more that we are planning to launch before the end of this financial year. Yeah. And if you take into that, the subsidy is same to get over, it gets over for everybody. So it is still yeah. a level playing field and the overall, you know, the level of the water is going to go up. And then let's we'll have to see as to how much of electric industry, you know, is able to absorb. But given the product competitiveness, we are reasonably confident to get a fair share of the high-speed market, even without subsidy, because it is going to be level playing field versus other players. So we should be, uh, you know, uh, uh, hoping for getting the rightful share of the high-speed segment of the market. We believe that if subsidy goes away, fancy city speed will become a little more prominent, given the price factor, as you understand, and high speed will probably shrink a little bit of a segment. But within that, I think we will be extremely competitive. So that's what we believe. Uh, the second part about PLI, we are not part of the PLI at this point of time. There are two kinds of PLIs, as you know. Uh, one of the PLIs, as and when it kicks in, uh, one is a cell uh, PLI, advanced cell chemistry PLI, and one is a component uh, uh, PLI. The, as and when it kicks in, uh, there is a, a stipulation as per PLI policy that part of the benefit has to be passed on to OEMs, and we will qualify for that. So we will take as and when that benefit really starts coming. Okay. okay. But your own vehicles, you're saying you're not trying to get them certified for PLI, like you're as an OEM yourself of the vehicles? No, will be, uh, PLI is actually an eligibility where you have to apply to the government policy to get that. Yeah? So we are not part of that uh, kind of okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'll come back with you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pramod Amte from Incred. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, my first question is with regard to uh, the three wheelers. Uh, when you say operating margin, is it uh, EBITDA margins or uh, just to clarify, profitable? Uh, when you talk about grease electric mobility, uh, if you're referring to uh, this. Yeah, yeah, for the three wheelers. Yeah. 
for the PBLs, I'm talking about operating margin to start with, and then of course there will be a PBT which will be uh, break even. So the operating margin, as per your definition, is EBITDA or a gross margin? Just to operating margin. I'm talking about EBITDA margin. Okay. EBITDA. Thanks. So the uh, second question related to the same is uh, if you look at uh, three wheeler and two wheeler, you are one of the uh, few guys who operate in both the spaces. Uh, wanted to understand, considering the position where you are, being able to make operating margins much faster in three wheeler. Can you tell us something about the competitive intensity and technology? Is it better there in three wheelers and hence it is relatively uh, uh, faster and possible to accurate you on the margin front as compared to two wheelers? And also, second one is, are there any synergies you have been able to draw from two wheelers to three wheelers and hence that cost optimization has also played out for you to early achieve those uh, break even points on a lower volume? Yeah, so let me first come to your first question in terms of uh, three wheelers. Three wheeler intrinsically has been the strength of Greece as a group. In fact, uh, legacy of the entire engineering excellence actually comes from the three wheeler prowess that the group has demonstrated. Arup did talk about this whole uh, the entire powertrain and how it comes to, you know, uh, really mobilize any kind of a three wheeler on the road. So coming from there, our three wheeler intrinsically has got a stronger profit margin because we have a portfolio of diesel, we have a portfolio of CNG, and we have a portfolio now emerging of electric. So we have an intrinsically stronger margin in IC three-wheelers that we are currently marketing through MLR Auto. That's the subsidiary of Greece Electric Mobility. I'll come to electric rickshaw a little later. The second part of electric technology you talked about of electric autos, electric L5, we just unveiled the electric uh, cargo vehicle called Greece Eltra, which on electric powertrain technology is superior to any other competitor that is on the currently on the Indian roads there. It has uh, a, a range of over 100, two range of over 100 kilometers to a single charge. It's got a ability for full payload of over 500 kgs to do a 12 gradient, 12 degrees gradient kind of a slope. It's a fully IoT connected vehicle, the first fully IoT connected cargo electric three-wheeler vehicle on the road. So on technology, we are benefited from that. Coming to the second part of our question about synergies between two and three-wheelers, there is a tremendous synergy that we get, both in terms of back-end and also in terms of front-end. In terms of back-end, there is a dramatic synergy in engineering, design, and the supply chain sourcing, which really starts coming in. It's not just the parts commonality or platform commonality. It's just purely in terms of the resource and the skill base we have in our human talent. I think is a great synergy we get. Yes, there are some other design synergies, data, for example, HMI clusters, batteries, some of these are other synergies that we have started already getting some early benefits from as we start launching our three-wheeler business. Coming to electric rickshaw business, which is the other part of our business there, there again, we are operatively strong in terms of our ability to, one, in terms of our margins, and I'm talking about EBITDA, not gross margins alone, EBITDA margins there. And there also, we are working towards making sure that our electric rickshaw is one of the most reliable, trustworthy, and safe electric rickshaws on Indian roads. And that's the kind of a journey we are on. And there too, as you know, the same synergies from our two and three wheeler, the other L5 business do spill over uh, dramatically. But I can take any specific pointer if you want to have. Sure. So as a follow-up, the reason to ask the synergy is the largest cost component, which is battery, uh, seems to be of different uh, nature, NMC versus LFP. So how do you derive that? By sourcing from a same vendor, or actually what does it go at the back end? Yeah, it's okay. So I think, look, there are two things in a battery. One is the cell, and second is really the assembled battery. Yeah? So we are looking at convergence as we go forward. Yeah? As we are building scale and we are building more products in our portfolio. Till about last year, we had just about Magnus EX and Zeal CA, you know, just the two products. Now we have Primus added on. We have just launched about a Greece ultra cargo vehicle. We are about to, you know, introduce passenger as we go forward there. Clearly, the point you made, both in terms of cell procurement and in terms of batteries, and it's not too different, actually. It's just a, a matter of uh, basically modularity of a battery moving from a 2 kilowatt to probably a 10 kilowatt for a three-wheeler, yeah? a three-wheeler kind of a drive powertrain that it needs. So yes, we are going to be converging and you will see in the next few quarters of convergence happening both in terms of cell and the battery uh, assembly going forward over the next one to two years. You'll see that happening.
Thanks. So one thing which we, uh, if we can address, which missed out was the competitive intensity in two wheeler versus three wheeler. Mr. Pramod. Yeah. Can so um, yeah, I'll just answer that, and then I think maybe you can get sure. back to the few there. Thank you. But the competitive intensity in either of the markets is, 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 is fairly well established. It's like both personal and shared mobility have been in India for a very long time, and both of them have fairly strong players. And India's position, even in the global roadmap, has been fairly strong, both in two- and three-wheelers there. Yeah. It just happens that in two-wheelers, if you just start counting the number of players, both domestic and international, and the EV journey, to that extent, has been a little more pronounced than in three-wheelers at this point of time. And two wheelers, in terms of its electric journey, started about three to four years a little ahead of the three wheeler market. So that may be the only difference. But at this point of time, just to give you one data point, we will probably have close to about three quarters of a million electric three wheelers coming onto Indian roads, which is not very different than a two wheeler number. So, in terms of the growth gradient right now, electric three wheelers is actually accelerating even faster. And I did give you the numbers of quarter on quarter 23% growth. Uh, that the industry got. In fact, electric L5 had 56% quarter on quarter growth, you know, uh, which is the quarter two over quarter one. So overall, uh, in terms of competitive intensity, while on the paper it looks two-wheeler is a little high, but I would say that both are uh, equally competitively intense, and I think that's a very welcome thing because overall the industry moves faster, the ecosystem develops faster, the supply chain comes very, very quickly there. And I think this is a very good, healthy competition which benefits customers at the end of the day. So I think it's very welcome in both the, both the industries. Thanks, Anwar. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have pressed star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Siddhan Sanjesha from KBS. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks. But I just wanted to sort of circle back on uh, the exciting announcement that you all have sort of released uh, to the rest of the shareholders about uh, Abdul Latif Shamil and their investment into Greaves Electric Mobility. And uh, since their sort of investment, it's been around a year and a half. And um, I think not a lot of uh, information <clears throat> regarding the potential synergies going forward. So. For the benefit of grief shareholders, uh, can you spend some time throwing some light on the last one year uh, since the investment was made? Um, how have we evolved as a company by having them not only as a financial partner, but also as a strategic partner on board? Yeah, uh, I'll take that. Uh, as you alluded to, ALJ came in as a strategic investor more than about 15 months ago, June of last year to be precise, right? Uh, they are a global distributor around in 30 plus countries, bring in international depth, have worked with other EV companies like Rivian, which went through its own startup phase, et cetera, et cetera. So, so clearly <clears throat> they are on the board. They are valuable members of the board and uh, help our management from time to time. So they are a minority investor. They are a valuable uh, addition to our extended team. And I think as Sanjay and the team go international, I think they are gonna be even more valuable given their international experience. Got it. So um, so the distribution capabilities are uh, are well understood and appreciated and hopefully, you know, uh, the management would be kind enough to sort of lay out a, a roadmap for expanding our uh, export sort of mix. But, um, you know, uh, I was reading an interview given by Hassan Jamil and he sort of mentioned about how their mobility strategy has three core pillars. And out of that, their first pillar sort of revolved around design. And it seems like over the last one year or year and a half, we've been sort of making that, uh, or, or forgive my uh, lack of ignorance on the, on the timeline, but it seems like um, our key priority also revolves more around product and tech and sort of having them on board. Um, have we seen any, any advancements on the same or can you spend some light as to, you know, just um, explaining a little bit about, you know, uh, what advancements have been made uh, on the tech and product side on the electric mobility piece of business. Thanks. Yeah, so I think that's a good point. If uh, uh, some of you were 
at our Auto Expo stall where we unveiled a series of products designed in India and uh, uh, engineered and designed by our stylists. Right, so we have an in-house design styling team and an in-house infotainment and a cluster team. So a lot of the design elements, the product development, collectively by the entire think tank, uh, led by the management team and supported by the board, right? I think it's well on its way. Uh, I will also request uh, Mr. Bell to add. No, just to be um, getting into a specific question you asked on design, uh, as Nagesh mentioned, in Auto Expo, we had un unveiled the core design theme and the philosophy for both our two inch wheelers embedded into architecting turn in inspiration. This is the Norwegian bird we talked about, and that was to really flow into our design ethos for all our products there. That is, um, as you rightly said, some of the investor inputs have already been taken in and from the ALJ team there, and both of us have co-developed it in the in-house, what do we call it, design, Greek design studio. Now that product, the first real implementation of that is coming up actually part of Investor Deck is going to be on the NX platform that you see as part of our presentation. So that will be the full embodiment of the design ethos that has started now taking shape for all the Greece electric mobility products. And uh, going forward, there is going to be a lot more platform convergence that you will start seeing, uh, not just within the different segments of two wheelers from low speed, city speed and high speed, but also within the two and three wheeler businesses there. And as a man, I think uh, those are ready. I think we'll share the roadmap with you. Got it, perfect. That's uh, really helpful. Thanks. I'll circle back in the line. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sonal from Priscient Investment Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir, this is Sonal. Am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Sir, uh, this is with regard to the two-wheeler market. Just wanted to understand at this point in time, maybe October, November, uh, and maybe take a reference point of our, our uh, two-wheeler as signers. Uh, it's uh, the two 450 model for them and Ola S1. Just wanted to understand uh, that uh, how, what is the difference in, let's say, the X showroom price or net on-road price between us and them, is it largely the subsidy? That's the first question. Uh, and this is linked to uh, the numbers on the ground, what we're seeing on the Wahan dashboard. Uh, our numbers have come down significantly while the numbers for the others are reasonably up. So uh, just wanted to understand, like, uh, is this this pricing? Is this product specification? Uh, and as somebody else in the call was asking earlier, that. Uh, uh, maybe when the next round of AIM subsidies comes, is this gap going to diminish over time? Uh, how do you see this market playing out? Because uh, otherwise the product doesn't seem to be viable at the operating level given how the margins we're talking about. So uh, just want to understand uh, where are we actually in the market right now as we see in terms of some industry. So, <clears throat> so we, uh, uh, we are going amongst the top five electric two-wheelers in the country at this stage, and I'll take all parts of the question pretty quickly. So we are at about a 6.3% market share of electric two-wheelers in quarter two. Now, you rightly said that compared to last year, which was about 12%, this has been come down, but there has been also an explanation to that in the last six months where we have not accounted for any subsidy, we've not availed any subsidy from the government, and we've not really been able to pass it down to the customer. So that has created an asymmetrical competition versus uh, some of the other players who have had higher kilowatt batteries like Ola's you talked about or some of our competitors with three kilowatt, four kilowatt batteries who've enjoyed a little higher subsidy and with an asymmetrical competition where we were not availing it and they were availing it. The difference only went up. So this is a momentary uh, kind of a blip is what I would like to believe that we've seen in the first half and this should start recovering as we get normalized to the subsidy whether it's train two or whether everything goes away and it becomes a level playing field or if AM3 has to come, then of course, uh, you know, if Greaves is part of it. So that, that, that is a temporary blip and I, I think that that's the way you should also look at it. Coming to the overall segmental thing versus the, one of the sources of growth, there are two sources of growth for electric scooters or electric two-wheelers, if you include motorcycles or mopeds also. One source of growth is that if a customer is wanting a second vehicle in the home or a 
existing IC customer who is already a hot prospect. The second is a first time mobility user. So it's the first vehicle which gets into the home. These are the two large sources of growth. For the person who is taking a second vehicle who's already got an IC alternative, TCO and value probably becomes a little more kind of an important thing and hence we are finding a lot more electric uh, two-wheelers getting into those homes. For a first-time user who's coming into this category, it is important that same subsidy was able to provide that entry price kind of competitiveness to EVs versus IC options there. And with that subsidy reducing, we're already seeing some impact on the market. And you're rightly there that if your customer is going to walk in, if he's looking at any alternative of 2C, if he's getting at 80,000 rupees, why will he pay a 1 lakh or a 1 lakh 10,000 rupees for an entry level similar spec EV, electric two-wheeler? Yeah? And hence, that's the difference that has come down come up and that led to some slowdown in the market. Going forward, we believe that with the electric uh, electronic prices really, which is largely part of RMC coming down, we believe that this prices, along with some subsidy incentive continues, will continue to get equated with the IC alternatives and we will even have the second source of growth. We can dip into that. So this is where the overall market is and this is where our position is. If you have any other question, then I can answer that. So just to just uh, a short on this, if let's say just on the mathematical side of it, if there is no subsidy, the price of all the the product should be basically comparable in the market. Is is what I presume is is it should be? That is how it is. No, no. The um, what I've told you amongst the EVs, yeah, it will become parity. No, if there is no pain free, all the electric two wheelers will not get pain free. But versus IC, there is going to be a delta of about twenty to twenty five percent entry price level. So, so, so but at a TCO only level, only it is different. A yeah, total cost of ownership is a very different concept altogether. In total cost of ownership, even without subsidy, a electric two wheeler is far better. It's close to about two rupees seventy pesa per kilometer versus three rupees thirty to three forty pesa per. I see. That's the kind of equation there. So it's still about 20-30% more competitive. Understand that. Okay, sir. thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sundar from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Sundar. Can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. So uh, the question I had was more related to uh, how is the partnership with Abdul you know, the and what's the strategy that you're charting out for the part? Can you repeat that? You couldn't hear you. Partnership with whom? With Abdul Lati. I think I think this was addressed before in the previous question. I think we touched upon that in terms of uh, the areas, international distribution, some of the other areas. Yeah. Thank you. Next question. Before please. we take the next question, I'd like to remind the participants to limit the question to one per participant. You may join the queue for any follow ups. Thank you. Next question is from Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, sir, my first question is with regard to the EBITDA margins uh, for e mobility business. So, if you could comment, how do you see this in coming quarters and what is the broad trajectory for the next one or two years? Uh, overall, EBITDA margins, if you look at the quarter four of last financial year, we were profitable in two-wheelers and we had a marginal negative in our three-wheeler business. Uh, going forward, at this point of time, I don't want to speculate there, but we are coming very close to uh, operative margin break-even in our three-wheeler business. And two-wheeler continues to be impacted by subsidy as and when the subsidy gets regularized. And if it gets regularized, we will be uh, uh, coming to unit economics positive or even two-wheeler business. Okay, and regarding our uh, GCL plus Excel, the uh, other part of the business, uh, the margins that we are doing currently, uh, fair to say they are sustainable? Akila, you want to get that? Yeah, thanks for this. Uh, so basically what I would like to state here is that over the last eight quarters, we have been on this transformation journey a few things that we have really focused on is the product portfolio enrichment, like Arup had mentioned earlier, focusing a bit more on exports, and this is something we are working on, cost reduction, and, commodity, and obviously the benefit of the commodity pricing is coming to us. So given all these and the continued focus on this, we would hope that all this 
helps us to sustain these margins at these levels. I hope that answers your question. Yes, yes. thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nagesh Basavanhali for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you all for attending. As, uh, just doing a quick summary here, our journey that we started when uh, during the COVID era we took out costs, and the cost journey continues, like Dr. Basu was talking about, and then our operating margin improvements are visible. Our journey on a pure agnostic path, which was an and and and, diesel plus CNG plus electric continues. Our journey on being a pure agnostic player in addition and also looking at forward looking skill sets, i.e. mechanical to mechatronics to electronics and sensor continues. So thank you all for your attention and happy to take questions offline. Uh, our management team will be uh, ready and able to answer questions if you have additional questions since we had a paucity of time. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Greece Cotton Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.